This set of slides is about the financial sector and in this specific presentation we are going to look at the components of the financial system in South Africa. So in any economy we will always have surplus units, they have excess funds and we have deficit units, they need funds. So to obtain funds they can issue security. So the deficit units issue securities on the financial markets and the surplus units can buy these securities. So they will pay for the securities, they will pay the funds to the deficit units that issue the securities so they will receive these funds which they then can use to finance their deficit. So let's just quickly see what is a security. A security is a promise of funds that will be paid on a future date. So that funds that will be paid in the future can consist of the capital value of the security, it can be interest, it can be dividends. It, there are two types of securities, money market securities, which are short-term securities, and capital market securities, which are long-term securities. And examples of money market securities are treasury bills, which are issued by the government, short-term securities issued by the government, and then negotiable certificates of deposit are short-term securities issued by banks. Um, government bonds are long-term securities that are issued by the government, while shares is a type of long-term security that is issued by a company and on which dividends are paid, while companies can also issue um, company bonds on which interest will be paid. There are also other types of securities, but we are not going to look at those in this module. So if we go back to our diagram, can call this whole process where the deficit unit issues securities in the financial markets, sell it to the surplus units and receive the funds. We call that direct financing. But there are problems with direct financing. In the first place, the risk is unknown. The surplus units may not know the deficit unit and will not know if they are trustworthy. Therefore, they may be reluctant to buy the securities issued by the deficit unit. Transaction cost is also high when it comes to direct financing because each individual deficit unit have to issue securities and that's a very expensive process. And then the cost of obtaining information is also high because the surplus units generally are not always in the business of obtaining financial information about companies in the economy. So therefore, to solve those problems, we get indirect financing. Now, indirect financing takes place via a financial intermediary. So the financial intermediary will now issue securities, and in return for that, they will pay, the, the surplus units will pay for the securities, so they will hold the securities. Surplus units will be more willing to purchase securities from financial intermediaries because they are generally well known in the economy, for example, the large banks. The deficit unit can then obtain a loan from the intermediary and the financial intermediary then provide the funds that they've obtained through issuing these securities to the deficit unit who can use it to finance their deficit. So this is called indirect financing and it takes place via a financial intermediary. So previously we looked at the problems of direct financing. If we now look at the advantages of indirect financing in this case, the risk is known because the surplus units know the financial intermediaries, 
while the financial intermediaries will usually or often be the banks for the deficit units and therefore they will also have intimate knowledge of their financial situation. Because financial intermediaries are in the business of providing funds and issuing securities, transaction costs will be lower for them and the cost of obtaining information will also therefore be lower. So there are several advantages attached to indirect financing versus direct financing. So what is an intermediary? We've actually already explained that. They receive funds from surplus units and they provide funds to deficit units by providing loans to them. So if we now back to direct financing, we can see that deficit units will pay interest on the securities that they issue and the surplus units will receive interest on the securities or if it's shares that we issue they will also receive dividends. We look at indirect financing the deficit units will pay interest on the loan that they obtain from the financial intermediary. The financial intermediary will pay interest on the securities that they issued and that was bought by the surplus units and the surplus units will receive interest on these securities. So in this presentation we explain direct financing we explained what a security is, we explained indirect financing, and we explained what an intermediary is.